Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Youth Matters. Now on today's show we are discussing mental health and how it impacts a young person how it impacts the family, how it impacts our community overall, and whether we're doing enough to talk about it and uh, try and uh, solve some of the challenges that we have, and ultimately trying to raise awareness about mental health. Now, before we go any further, we have a caller on the line, uh, so we'll go straight to them. Assalamu alaikum caller. Assalamu alaikum caller. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, how would you like to contribute, brother? Yeah, brother, I needed some advice, if possible. Um you know, I was around my sister's house one day and uh, I see my niece, uh, she's about nine years old, and I found her cutting her arm. Right. So I just wonder uh, what I can do to, you know, to support and stop doing this. Sure. Okay, brother, thank you for your question. SubhanAllah, um, Assalamu alaikum, uh, Khalibai, welcome to the show. Um, now, Khalibai, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, it's, it's quite a distressing call, okay, and the uh, manner of which uh, and the topic that the brother has covered. Now, what do you do in that situation if you witness a family member who's cutting them what do you do self-harm obviously falls under yeah. self-harm what do you do in that situation uh, thank you for first of all inviting me and it's a very important topic you've chosen which is young people mental health which as a community we're not comfortable talking about mental health sure. so uh, i think it's, we should come out a bit more and talk about it because no health is without mental health and government is recognizing that and the, as for the caller it's a difficult one because is this a nine years old? Yeah. Somebody is nine years old self-harming. Really worrying, your primary school student. Yeah, with nine-year-old, it would be very distressing. And it's, it's for me to advise without knowing the background and things. It's a very difficult one as well. well uh, what would you do immediately? So if I have came in, if you were to walk into a room and you saw a nine-year-old, say one of your family uh, relatives doing yeah. that, what would be the initial I mean, f reaction? First thing, I would need to find out what happened and who's around that person. What's the support network does this person have? Is you've got parents then saying, you know, speak to the parents, what's happening here? And mm. there are lots of avenues you can seek help. Sure. I mean, okay. you've got professional. We live in a country where there's a lot of services, particularly for mental health. If you were in Bangladesh, you don't have those services, yeah. resources, and luxury of those. So it's very important that you establish what's going on with that okay. child and why this is happening. Okay. Now, Nazmin, um, as a social worker who works with young people, what would you, have you come across cases where due to self-harm, you know, students, uh, young people have developed mental health issues. So what do you do in a situation like that? Um, How have you dealt with those cases? As a caller, that's quite a distressing example. Um, I mean, because she's very, or he, or his niece, so she's very young. Um, what we do, uh, what I'd advise him to do straight away is just talk to her. Um, you know, if he's seen that, go up to talk to her. Um, you know, be quite sympathetic um, and just what's going on. Are you okay? What can I do to help you? I think we should go and get some help. And then if you can, just take her to a hospital, because A&E you can get assessed and you can go through services through there and she can access them. Or if she feels like that's too much, she can go to the GP, he can attend with her. Okay. I mean, talk to her. If she feels like, I don't want to tell my mum and dad right now, I mean, you have to assess on how you comfortable you feel. But if you go against her and then go to her parents when she said not to, I mean, you, sh you might isolate yourself from helping her further. Mm -hmm. So I guess, but she's very young, she's, she's nine. So I think the best thing is go and get her to... Um, medical help and then from there they can refer on to other services. Okay. Now Adil, um, is this something that's quite common from you know you going to school, colleges, have you seen signs where people are, might have self-harmed um, around you? Well, obviously people don't really show that they're self-harming but um but have you come across, you know, to say, yeah, I have, or I have sometimes when you know sometimes it's quite, uh, you can see the signs, have you, yeah. have you seen it yourself yeah. without mentioning names? I have seen it myself um, indirectly okay but um it's yeah it's a really distressing sort of topic and i think one thing that may cause it is bullying um it's interesting it is um quite a widespread issue okay so um going back to uh talking about self-harm um and i guess it brings us nicely on to you know raising much needed awareness and you spoke about this uh tell us a bit about world mental health day which is taking place and why it's taking place yeah, this is a world uh, who organized world health organization initiatives it's every year 10th of october to raise awareness and um, bridge some of the challenges really tackle some of the challenges particularly stigma and uh, taboo within communities around the world so there are Every single borough has some sort of um, initiatives, activities Excellent. to raise awareness. This year, I think the topic they've chosen is psychological first aid. Okay. 
Okay. So it's about raising, talking to colleagues amongst peers, friends, family members, sure. what is mental health. Okay, now, Khalibai, why do you think people find it so difficult to talk about mental health? Um, it's a not a very easy subject for people to talk about. Um, for example, we are, as a society are quite judgmental. Um, and this is kind of it's brought down from generation to generation where this is something uh, socially quite connected and it's sort of social status and things. And people are easy to get, go and get have a check for diabetes and screening for other. But mental health, we don't do enough checks and things. Sometimes we don't are there Are there checks that people can go and do? Uh, checks, for particularly, you need to check yourselves. Am I, my, is my mental health as well? And is it first, and for particularly for young people, it's difficult for them to understand mm. what's going on. And sometimes those first um, onset of experience are quite a bit frightening. They don't understand what's going on with them. Okay. So they f could find difficult to sure. speak to anybody about it. Sure. But also as a family member, friend, it's also your responsibility to look out for your friends and family members. Sure. Uh, if, if anything okay. out of character or not in ordinary that you don't see. Sure, sure. Now, Nazmin, should our young people um, try and you know mental health I think it's something that can be very quite frightening and mm -hmm. quite quite a scary and distressing topic to talk about mm -hmm. now could a young person should a young person be worried if they're going through say a temporary um, feeling or temporary period where mm -hmm. they're not feeling that well it could be many things yeah. I guess if someone's unwell mm -hmm. you know uh, and it might be a short-term kind of uh, challenge that they're having in their personal life should they be worried that it could be something bigger because sometimes you know you have the self uh, fulfilling prophecy where sometimes if it's something small but we make something big of it and mm -hmm. then we start thinking maybe it is mm -hmm. maybe I am that they almost try and categorize themselves into uh, because I've been spoken to some teachers in schools you have some students who if they're not being you know if they want to get out of studying and sometimes they're ca uh, you know uh, categorizing a particular uh, statement they try and live to uh, they try and fulfill that statement requirement so that then they've got an excuse yeah. so what do you have um, you come across that I mean, some young people can take advantage of certain situations, like you mentioned with the yeah. teachers. Um, I think it's important that, in terms of mental health, uh, people, if they've got a flu, you know, they go to the doctors, they might get an antibiotic to kind of um, uh, cure that flu or cold. So I think your mental health is what well. we need to take it just as seriously. Like how are you doing t that day? How are you feeling? If you're feeling like you can't get out of bed for a whole week, then there's something wrong there. And I think you need to identify with yourself, like what's going on there. And you just need to talk to people around you. I mean, people do have a self-fulfilling prophecy that they might feel like in that mood because they're going through a life change. I mean, mm. um, young people these days, they're growing up and they're learning their identity, they're learning their personality. So, um, so lots of things are going so on. So how long before a person kind of starts thinking, OK, is this something much more big or is it just a phase that I'm going through? Everyone's different. Okay. So, um, so some people, it might be like, well, I'm okay, I'm functioning right now, but these are, there's a few things that are going on. Some people are like, well, the whole world is over and it feels complete. So everyone is different. But if you do feel like you're not well, I mean, go to the closest person next to you. It could be a friend, it could be a family member, it could be a professional from school or college. Um, but go and ask for help, saying that, do you know what, I feel a bit odd today and I don't know why, this is what's going on. Mm. And just have that conversation. But you need to be open and have that conversation. Okay, now... Can I just come into that conversation. It's very interesting. It's functionality is the key here. I think we all have a bad days, you know, don't feel like going to work, mm -hmm. just going to lie down all day, which is fine. But this is something that's continuously affecting your day-to-day -day activities. And work, working life is affecting your working life, relationship and things like that. Yes. Then you need to be worried about it and okay. need to have that check. Okay, that's really interesting. Thank you. Now, Adil, um, just putting you on the spot. Into, have you have you experienced that where there might have been a week where you didn't feel so well or for whatever reason but it was just a temporary kind of sensation that you went through and yeah. it didn't become anything bigger but you know so uh, did you have you experienced that in your personal life yeah I have experienced uh, this sort of this sort of thing it happens in I think in everyone's life um, people go through these blips and there's just you know when something happens um, when something bad happens to a person, um, it tends to like affect their mood and affect how uh, they sort of function. Sure. And sure. It, it has happened to me, but it hasn't been long term. Okay. Can I just say, what you've just said, I don't think w many young people are confident of saying this because of the taboo and stigma that we have. Because I've, I've uh, come across young people, particularly that I've worked with directly, 
they had a very good um, uh, friends circle. Once they disclosed that, that gradually deteriorated. They okay. lost their contact with the friends because they uh, seems to they want to associate somebody who has got mental health problems. They tend to define that mm -hmm. person with as a mental health. Uh, person who is mentally ill rather than person who has a mental health sure issue. now that's been you know uh, holy by touches upon something really important there mm -hmm. where sometimes we don't want to admit it because we don't want to be marginalized amongst our friend friendship circles and stuff mm -hmm. like that do you come across that definitely i think it's not just that friendship circle it's that family as well because a lot of people don't know how to how to react to it I mean, you know, the caller just said, well, I saw my niece doing that, what do I do? Because it's not a subject that people talk about a lot and which really needs to be spoken about. I mean, there's a lot of spotlight in terms of, for example, if somebody's got cancer, you know, there's a lot of conversation about what your symptoms to look out for and how to access help. But in mental health, there's not a lot of awareness as much as there should be. And it, I mean, we're trying. So um, definitely um, there's a difficulty of young people coming forward mm. and asking for help because they don't want to be marginalised, they don't want to be isolated, they don't want to be seen as different. I mean, and they're not different. Everyone goes through mental health in their life. I mean, I have a friend who's a psychotherapist. And everyone will experience a mental health episode. Um, it's, it's just inevitable. You know, you go through life experience, mm -hmm. you do that. It's just about how you come through that and mm -hmm. what you do to come through it. Sure. Now, uh, Adil, do you, uh, you hear about a lot of young people who were trying to see if there's a link between unemployment and mental health. Have you seen people, young people, who, you know, sometimes they're trying to get a job and they find it hard, and then weeks go by, months go by, and they're still not employed, maybe years go by. Have you seen anyone who's actually become quite depressed uh, because they can't access work? I haven't actually seen anyone. Um, do you know anyone, or have you heard? But I, I have heard of people that, um, it's, you know, it's just, it's just something that there's not much to do about. It's just... Um, because it does affect your yeah, confidence, doesn't it? Does, it, it does That's affect a person's uh, confidence and well-being being unemployed for however long it is mm. and um, it is quite difficult nowadays the the pressures to get a job and you know earn a living yeah and it's it's not helped by uh, with the fact that the unemployment is is rising and it's and especially you know amongst young people as well so someone like yourself for example you know you're studying at the moment are you at the back of your head are you concerned that once I go through you know we, we study for a significant amount of time and then after all of that what if I don't get a job? Does that keep you awake at night or you're okay? Do you think it, about that? Yeah, I do think about that a lot. It's just something that, you know, you, you're never sure about what's going to happen um, after five years or however long it is. Um, you know, worried about what sort of job you're going to get at the end of a degree or, you know, wherever it is. It's just you, you, ha you have a lot of young people, don't they, who say now, I don't want to study because, you know, there aren't any jobs. But, you know, you're someone who's studying uh, and, and what would you, how would you react to someone who says that? Would you say that that's the wrong attitude to have? I think it is the wrong attitude. Like, you can never get anything without trying. So, um, yeah, by all means, you should, you should try your best and if it doesn't work out, then there's, mm. there's other things to do. Okay, now thank you for that. Khalibai, in terms of disability and um, if we try and link it to mental health, you hear many, you know, research shows that there are a lot of people who, so, who have a particular disability and that can actually be the cause of depression or other mental health issues. Have you come across that in your work? Uh, so, so what do you say, mean? Say, for example, someone who is deaf, okay? The fact that they, you know, they're almost marginalised, they can't interact, they have many barriers. Could that be a cause for them getting quite depressed? Um, not necessarily that if you've got physical disability can actually cause um, there isn't I haven't come across okay. any or research or any paper sure. study that shows that this but there are environmental factors that your upbringing there are different models I mean medical models mm. primarily would say there is a, a genetic uh, cause to sure. that in I'm, ju I'm just family. thinking you know if I if I'm a, say if I'm someone who has you know uh, a deafness if I have, if I, if I'm deaf, and I see people around me, and maybe my family can't use sign language to uh, communicate with me, that would that could cause a person um, stress, mental stress, mental illness, uh, yes, mental it challenges. Can cause right? definitely stress and challenges, but not necessarily cause an illness. Okay. Uh, not necessarily a uh, mental problem. Could that could that not cause? Because remember, with someone who's deaf, it's over a significant period of time. It's not like something like we've spoken about over a week. Um, could that, could that I be haven't a come across anything that actually proves that could be the cause. Um, 
But like, can you see this, where I'm coming from yes. in terms of, you yeah. know, if, but if there are a dual diagnosis, for example, somebody, you know, who is using drugs, for example, okay. substance, and that can cause, or sometimes they said somebody who's a government illness use substance. So, I mean, there are learning disability and uh, mental illness as so dual diagnosis. Somebody who's got mental illness can have learning disability as well, that's but not necessarily the learning disability causing somebody to become mentally unwell. Okay, that's quite so. So, yeah. according to you, someone who has learning difficulties, a young person who's watching this who might have learning difficulties, there's no common cases where that leads to them um, having a mental problem later on? It's sometimes it's very difficult to identify which one is what. Okay. And sometimes, often, these people struggle, particularly dual diagnosis, okay. which service should pick them up. Okay. Sometimes they'll say, no, no, it's so not when, mental Just for the benefit of our audience yeah. at home, when we talk about dual diagnosis, is this where more than one... More than one condition. Okay, yes. more than one, one condition. condition yes. Okay, that's fine. Now, Nazmin, do you, do you get people who you know, with who, who come to you uh, and because of, say, pressures from school, college, mm -hmm. uh, it impacts the way they behave and maybe, you know, mentally it co puts a lot of pressure on them. Do you get a lot of cases like um, that? Because we've got a lot of young people watching this show and they might actually be, you know, quite mentally uh, strained uh, because of the pressures. Do I you think adults mentioned a lot about pressures and, and the young people, the pressures they go through um, in terms of trying to do well and make sure they get f um, good uh, grades in um, their college and you know they just the attainment level has to be very very high and that pressure on themselves and sometimes some young people might um, experience bullying as well um, there's so, so, so many pressures for our young people these days in terms of society what they expect from them from um, young women to young men as well what you're expected to do how you're expected to act is everything's judged you know it is a judgmental society so there is a, a lot of pressure our young people go through and at the same time you have to remember they're growing up as well they're learning who they are so all this is kind of just pressure is building up and it, sometimes it could release into a manifestation of self-harm or it could be a low, very low mood that could turn into depression um, but it's about everyone, them to seek help when they feel like they're not themselves, when they feel like something's not right. And what would you say, Talk you know, someone somebody. who's going through, you know, going through those experiences, mm -hmm. uh, what would your advice be in terms My of support? My first advice is honestly go to somebody you feel like you can trust um, and you feel like they can help you. So it could be a friend, it doesn't have to be what your about, parent. What about for a parent who, uh, you know, who identifies that their child might be going through some mental challenges? What would you say to I the parents I think the first watching? step is honestly don't complicate it so much. Just go and have a conversation with your children. You know, ask them, are you okay? What's wrong? I mean, don't pressure them. If you're like, well, tell me what's wrong and get angry and irritable. If they're not ready to tell you, they're not ready to tell you. But seek advice. I mean, go to their own GPs, go to um, the teach schools and so on. I would say, I'm really worried about um, my child. Have you noticed anything different? What can we do to support them? But the you know, first step would be yeah. for them to speak to their Just child. Just talk to them. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Thank you. Now, that's the end of the second segment. In the third segment, we're going to focus on solutions and also, you know, preventative measures that can be taken to ensure and safeguard our children from mental health problems. So please do stay with us.